Today we'll be taking a look at everyone's favorite Jim Gremlin in a Generation 1 solo run. Sableye and later Spirit Tomb are the two Pokemon that are ghost and dark typing. And until Fairy was released, they had the distinction of having no weaknesses. Fighting immunity just isn't that great in Generation 1, but normal immunity should come in handy early. But let's take a look at some stats. Sableye doesn't have a great stat total. At 315, it would rank in the 80s, like 88 or something like that out of the original 151 and it would be around Pokemon like Rhyhorn, Lickitung, and Porygon and it just doesn't really do anything particularly well. Its level up learn set outside of some basic normal moves is almost exclusively ghost moves and with 75 attack and the fact that ghost moves are physical in Gen 1 it should at least give the run a chance. Now if you want to know the site that I use for these runs it's called Sanqui so google that and the rules for the run are in the description as always so check that out if you are so inclined. And really quickly I'd like to say that if you enjoy the content and want to contribute to the channel's growth, a like and a comment goes a long way. Now if you're someone that normally doesn't think about that sort of thing, or you just don't know what to say, type in Jimlin down below because I love combining words. And if you like solo run content and want to be kept up to date, consider subscribing. And if you want to show even more support, consider becoming a member. And now, make sure to grab yourself a Sodi Pop. And let's get to the reason why you're all here. Now the first order of business is to learn Nightshade at level 8 and you can do that with just two battles on the first optional bug catcher and then the mandatory one. Now you've seen in the Haunter video that Nightshade can be pretty solid if you plan it out right but Leer does put in some work for when you have to use Scratch and do some normal damage. Now this isn't really too relevant to anything but I will say that I recorded this run before the Haunter run so my Nightshade management probably isn't as tight as it was in that run but let's take a look at the rock solid Pokemon trainer real quick. Now generally this is an easy matchup, but the Sanquid tool like it tends to do makes things a little bit difficult. Now as for Geodude, a handful of Nightshades is all it takes to get it out of here and it's not an issue, but Onyx is a little different story. The first problem is that I'm outsped, so I go for a Nightshade, but it goes for Bide first. Now even if I stop immediately, I didn't heal, so I'm missing a slight bit of health and the Bide damage takes me down to just 7 health afterwards. Now this makes me weary, so I start going for for leers but in a normal playthrough onyx just wouldn't be able to hit me back with any other move but bad but here it has rock tomb and it forces an early reset on my second attempt i just let the chips fall where they may straight nightshades while throwing caution to the wind for bad gets me through and there's not much more to say about brock now moving ahead we've seen a little bit more depth on the haunter run about how nightshade needs to be managed and it's pretty similar here with higher attack and moves like scratch it's still pretty good but the sentiment is still the same so check out that video if you want a closer look a deeper dive into that because I don't want to bloat the Sanqui runs too much and I will say that this run has a lot of problems and like always this isn't my first run and this was my attempt to alleviate some of the issues I had but we'll get into those as they get closer as they come but for now just know that I do start picking up extra trainers already before I start making it to Mount Moon outside of going down to the buffed up super nerd once there's really not much to say for this segment and instead we can look ahead at rival number two. Now like we talked about in the last video, level 18 is optimal for these level based damage moves, but level 17 is fine. I do take a sand attack here and it turns out to be problematic. The problem here and a move that caused me a lot of frustration in this entire run is bite. Now it's a dark type move with these updated ROMs and even though I'm not necessarily weak to dark type, the neutral damage just really adds up and both Rattata and Squirtle has access to it. Now this one is closed and I think I would have done it on the first attempt without a sand attack, but it's another reset. On the next attempt, I don't take a sand attack, and that's a huge help like you would expect. This means I bob and I weave my way through the fight, but I do want you guys to notice how much damage this Squirtle racks up on me with bite, but I get the job done, and we can look ahead. And you guys can already see that Sableye isn't dominating just yet. I have several resets, and trust me when I say that my practice runs were very rough and they were much worse than this. Just like with Umbreon, this isn't going to be a run that's going to light up the final time and shake things up, but rather it's just another run that you kind of just have to have some fun 
fun with, so keep that in mind. Believe it or not, sometimes it's really refreshing to just be able to chill out and just play a game that I enjoy without being too analytical about it, without doing 10 runs of it. The goal up to this point in the early game was to squeak out as many extra levels as I could, and the path I took gets me to level 23 after the Golden Trainer in Cerulean, and that means I can use two rare candies and then I'll get access to Shadow Sneak at level 25. This is a high priority move, like Quick Attack, but it's Ghost type. As much as I would like to troll the comments by saying Ghost is a special type here, it's imperative to know that it's physical way before the physical special move split came out, and with Sable Eye's higher attack, it does help out. The real key here and the reason that I needed this level is that San Queen Misty is honestly a nightmare, specifically the Star Me because it has Hydro Pump coupled with that insane special and speed. This move not only allows me to do super effective damage against it, but it also guarantees me the first turn despite Sable Eye having pretty subpar speed, and you can see how quick this battle is now. Next up is the Dig Grunt, and Sable Eye can learn the very solid core of Dig and Body Slam, which is very solid. Now, I've said before incorrectly that Dig in the Sanqui ROM is only 60 base power, but after doing some research, Dig was actually buffed back up to 80 base power after its initial Gen 2 nerf, and that's pretty good. Now, it's not as strong as it originally was in Gen 1, but it still provides us with great coverage. Now, something I really thought was going to make the run a lot better was Rest. I pick it up, and it's going to be a long time before I talk about why Rest is absolutely garbage in the Sanqui ROMs, and I likely will never use it again, and I promise I'm not being too dramatic. And I think I mentioned it a little bit in last week's run, but we'll get there. We'll talk about why I feel so strongly about it. And outside of the rare candy guarded by the gentleman, it's on to rival number three. I don't even heal here if you want to know how much I respect this battle, but having Body Slam, Dig, and Shadow Sneak is a really formidable mid-game moveset, and even though I get really low at the end because of Bite, this one is easy and we can look ahead. Now the same thing goes for Surge. Dig might be a little bit weaker in these ROMs, but it's more than sufficient to clean sweep this battle. I will say that it's a shame that Sableye can't learn Thunderbolt or pretty much any coverage moves, but it really doesn't affect anything in the run until the very end. Rock Tunnel is insignificant with our moveset, so let's pick up Enceladon. I immediately tackle the Rocket Hideout to get some high money items, and normally we would skip over Giovanni number one, but San Kui Kangaskhan just hits different. I have no real answer for it, and even though I don't heal here, it's another situation where Bite comes into play and it forces another reset. Now even after I heal on the next attempt, you can see just how close it is. I go all the way down to 2 HP and I barely win this battle, but let's not get too caught up on this and just take the victory. From there, we don't have to go into rival number 4 in Pokemon Tower in general. It's an easy one-shot fest and the rest of the tower is trivial as well. From there, I pick up some more money items and the final HMs in Fuchsia, and for my one Celadon buy, I end up picking up 5 Carbos to bolster our speed and a protein for just a little bit more damage. I grab a Sodi Pop for the guard and then I make my way to Mr. Psychic and Saffron to pick up the TM for Psychic. With the lower special and Dig already on the learn set, it's not necessarily the best move in this situation, but it's about all that say well I can really learn. From there, I clear out Erica's gym for some easy experience, and Erica isn't that much of a challenge. Psychic at this stage can one-shot Victory Bell and Vile Plume, and Tangela just does its best like it always does. Now, something interesting at level 39 is that I get access to Shadow Claw. Now, I replace Body Slam, and you might be wondering why I would keep Shadow Sneak, but with slow speed, it was still pretty pretty critical to the success of this run. And speaking of critical, Shadow Claw has an increased crit rate, but it's very unfortunate that Sableye's base 50 speed makes it not a 100% chance to crit, but it's still solid. Next up is Koga, and I have the dealer's choice here of Dig or Psychic. Now either way, I resist poison, I'm immune to normal moves like self-destruct, and it's something that we've seen on other ghost runs, and it's no surprise that this one's over very quick. Now it's time for Sylph. I do get the rare candy on the 10th floor, but after that, it's time to look at rival number 5. Pidgeot is the lead, and being without Body Slam does hurt a little bit, but you can see that Psychic can do the job fairly efficiently, and it's really not that bad. Next up is Growlithe, we got Dig, and we don't need to give this puppy more screen time. Execute is third, and I have my choice of super effective shadow damage, and it's not a hassle like it is in some other runs. Now we get to Alakazam, and although we don't necessarily need the priority move to go first, it does let us easily get by, but Sableye is kind of just tailor-made to demolish Alakazam, and that feels 
good considering how oppressive it can be in other runs. Last up is Blastoise. I get outsped and you can see once again, you can see Bot rear its ugly head. It's just chewing me up, but I get the crit with Shadow Claw and since I'm outsped, Shadow Sneak's utility comes into play and it lets me get a cheeky little win here on my very first attempt. Now this was important because honestly, this battle was very rough on my test runs and although we had a rocky start, I was feeling pretty good about the run at this point. Now let's skip over Giovanni number two and take a look at what might be the easiest Sabrina fight you'll ever see. It's a series of quick one shots and I never get tired of seeing these Sanqui Roms being super effective against Alakazam. It's great. And after that, it's time to get my toes wet with a brisk swim down to Cinnabar. And this week, I do need more levels so I will take on the trainers inside the gym and then after that, it's time for a little Tombstoner, brother. And then we can look at Blaine. Now this fight seems like it would be straightforward, but the problems in testing came with the low base speed. Now I tried to use the Carbos, and I do make a blunder by going for Shadow Sneak too many times on the Ponyta, and the Rapidash almost forces another reset, but at the end of the day, I'm able to deal just enough damage in tandem with Dig to see the end of the fight. Now this one looks iffy after a bot takes me down to just 7 HP, but I dig underground, I cause the Arcanine to miss its move, and Dig does like 95% damage and this one is looking like a reset but guys this is where the adjustment to hang on to shadow sneak comes into play i'm able to ignore the fact that i'm outsped i use the ghost quick attack to finish off the battle and this was another very hard battle that i'm very happy that the adjustments made it another one shot first attempt now as for the Giovanni fight, I win a battle that I probably shouldn't have. Now the huge problems start when Doug Trio uses the guaranteed crit from Night Slash to nearly decapitate me and it's looking pretty grim, not gonna lie. I'm able to go on a tear from there with super effective psychic damage on each Nido, but Rhydon is tanky enough to survive, but Giovanni uses the sponsored guard spec from Sylph Co and he pretty much intentionally throws the match and just gives me the victory and I'm not even gonna question it. Now we get to rival number six and let's not play the music just yet and quickly just show you how rough this battle is. First off, taking any chip damage makes the Blastoise rough due to bite and that causes a lot of resets here, but the huge problem is up front with Pidgeot. Now it by itself can nearly solo me or at least maim me enough to the point to where I'm just hobbling into the rest of the fight. There are even things like Growlithe having crunch that just adds to the difficulty. Now I fell here a total of five times and I don't want to use candies just yet because there's way tougher battles ahead. Instead, I make a tactical retreat and I go to the fighting dojo to pick up some experience, hoping to get to the next damage rounding threshold to help out. These are really easy one shots and they really don't take up a lot of time. I get to level 50 overall, I return and I use five rare candies to get up to level 55 and I'm hoping that this is what it takes, but let's take a proper look at rival number six now. First up is Pidgeot, and now I'm taking much less damage overall, and I'm doing more damage, and even though I still take some pretty decent chip damage, I'm not even close to the red health going forward. Rhydon and Growlithe are the next Pokemon, and they share the common weakness to dig, and one for each of them take them out, and there's no reason to talk about them any further. Execute is next, I do outspeed here, and Shadow Claw's extra damage makes it an easy one shot, likely even without the crit. Shadow Sneak for Alakazam takes it out without it getting a move off but me being a dark type, it doesn't matter even if it did. And finally, Blastoise is up. Now, Bite is still a menace, and it makes this one extremely close, but I do hit those back-to-back 78% -back crits on the Shadow Claws, and I move on. Now, I wish I would have been able to get past this one without candies, and while five resets doesn't look that good right now, it's not gonna matter soon, but let's just kind of hobble into the Elite Four, and let's see how that goes. I use my final rare candies, I get up to level 59, and I get the chance to learn Shadow Ball. It's only got 10 base power higher than Shadow Claw, but I think the increased crit from Shadow Claw just seems better to me, so I don't learn it, but I did test it out and I just it just didn't pack as much of a punch. Lorelai is first, and I don't think there's too much use in going over this one fully. Shadow Claw's neutral damage in all these matchups does a ton, especially if we get the crit, and other things like switching to Psychic for Cloister since its defense is so high, and switching to priority moves like Shadow Sneak for Jinx just lets me cruise past this one. And I say cruise, but honestly I did get a little low, but it's another first try victory, and overall, it's not that interesting. Now speaking of not interesting, it's time for Bruno, and I don't think I need to explain what's going 
going on here or what's going to happen. Now some things aren't a one shot, but it really doesn't matter. Let's look ahead. Now for Agatha, this is where keeping Shadow Sneak paid off as one of my huge optimizations. With only 50 base speed and no badge boosting moves, I'll never outspeed her Pokemon. And having a priority move that's super effective honestly makes a battle that was originally very tough turn into one of the easier battles of the run. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the run. We've been doing pretty good. My time isn't that bad and all the adjustments I've made feel pretty good. Now from the Umbreon run, I thought I had learned my lesson so I picked up rest, I learned it over dig, and let's just look at Lance before we go into it any further. Now Gyarados is first, I don't outspeed. Obviously taking Dragon Rages or a Hydro Pump is going to hurt, but I do decent enough damage and you would think that with rest, this one would be easy just to sleep off later, so let's just move ahead. Next up, I do outspeed the first Dragonair and if I crit on Shadow Claw, it's a one shot, so that's good news. On the next Dragonair, my 50 speed comes into play, I don't crit, and then we see Thunder Wave. This is perhaps the most annoying move in the entire Sanqui ROMs, but here, we don't get to see the problems with it just yet. All you need to know here is that I went for a cheeky shadow sneak, but I got the fully paralyzed proc. I skip my turn. I get taken out. And I need to just focus on the fact that Sableye's stats just aren't that good. And at this level, there are just lots of times where Gyarados can just beat you by itself. It's not a great matchup. Now, we don't need to go into detail about Gyarados anymore. We all know what happens with it. But on the first and second Dragonair, I get crits and I one shot. So you might think that this one's in the bag, but Aerodactyl was another one of those Pokemon that gets a new move like Crunch and it does so much heavy neutral damage that I'm just taken out. And you might wonder about Dragonite, but that wing attack hits just as hard and it presents the same exact challenge. Now guys, I fail an extraordinary amount of times here and I'm not willing to show every attempt. This was heartbreaking because I thought I had figured this run out, but before we get to the solutions, I need to get into the reason why Rest is just so trash in this fight. So in Gen 1, there's one of those funny little interactions that if you get paralyzed in battle and then you heal the paralysis with pretty much anything, it's removed. You, you do heal it, but your speed is still cut in half. So in this case, the idea that you'll just rest off the paralyzed and be fine, it just isn't true because your speed's still going to be lower. And with Aerodactyl's Crunch or Dragon Knight's Wing Attack, it's just a real uphill battle. You can't outpace the damage. Now, honestly, Mimic for Hydro Pump like I did with the Umbreon Run is probably how these fights will go in the future, but remember that Sanqui ROMs are just generally played with great Pokemon, and Sableye just isn't that guy. And guys, I go all the way to a whopping 23 resets before I concede to my fate. And that's just the fact that Sableye just doesn't have the stats, and even though this run was pretty decent up to this point, I have to face the fact that I have to grind up some levels on the Elite Four, and like we've already seen, it's not that bad, so let's just skip ahead to where I make my next attempts. And guys, I have to go to a massive level 74 before this one gets consistent and feels good. As for Gyarados, this is the range where I can guarantee a two shot and take minimum damage here. As for the Dragonairs, we already could one shot them with a crit and now my non crit damage just does a ton and we don't need to go over them but avoiding thunder waves just seems like the better play since rest and paralysis have that weird interaction. Aerodactyl is the big reason for these levels. Now I can one shot it with a shadow claw but mimic for hydro pump probably would have done the same job but we'll talk about that later as for dragonite you just need to be here at a range where you can survive a single move because you will move first you'll tank the move and you'll finish it off with the second and that's what happens here and it wasn't great it was actually pretty bad but it is what it is now it's time for the champion and honestly i've leveled up so much that i don't expect much resistance here for pidgeot a couple of psychics can do the job and it misses its sky attack so we can just move on and it never gets old seeing alakazam be reduced to something trivial and I could watch this replay over and over and love it. Rhydon does some damage with a rock throw but at the end of the day it's a two shot. We can keep it cruising. Arcanine is in a range of a crit shadow claw beating up to 100 to zero it and just like that we are just inching closer. Executor is normally very annoying but it's a psychic type and that makes it get banished to the shadow realm and there's just one Pokemon remaining. Now on Blastoise I missed the first shadow claw and for one last time we get to see bite be very annoying and threaten to knock me out but with these extra levels I can outpace and that's the run over. 
And that's it. Sableye has done it. This one wasn't great. And just like Umbreon, it's all right. It doesn't have to be great. Not every run is going to be a banger. And sometimes I just kind of want to sit back and test something out, even though it didn't do that well in practice. But first, let's take a look at Mewtwo. And it goes about how you would expect. I'm immune to Psychic. And even though it's tanky enough to survive some hits after it sets up a barrier, this one is just very easy due to our top matchup. Now let's take a look at the stats. Sableye finishes with a level of 75 and a ton of resets at 23 and its final end game time is 4 hours and 2 minutes. Considering all the runs we've done, I wouldn't say this is an awful run, but at the end of the day, it's below average stats just hold it back. The lack of coverage moves also hurt it, but I think as we learn the meta of these Sanqui runs with worse runs, I'm slowly learning more strats because normally you just don't have to think about things like Lance with Thunder Wave on regular runs, but it is what it is. Rest is, I think it's worthless now, with how paralysis is bugged and going forward mimic for hydro pump is likely the safest thing to do but that's neither here nor there and we'll save that for another video i had fun and that's really the main point isn't it guys now let me know what you guys think about these runs they're a little bit subpar they aren't a plus now personally for me i think they are just as valuable but i do like to hear what you guys think and i think that's about all i have for you today but the last thing i'll say is thank you to my members for the support i really appreciate it a lot and a huge shout out to Mutus Dozen, D's Master, TR2G Hipster, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Ferment, Kendall C. And remember, if you are on the list and you've became a member, I make my videos in advance a little bit. So you'll be here eventually, so don't be upset. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!